Hey people, welcome back to my series on how to create orchestral music on PC. Let's check out something most do not speak about. A proper signal flow and handling of buses and how to record your music. This is massively important for your sound and workflow. Subscribe and comment, drop a like and check out the other videos of this series as well. Now let's get right into it. Proper signal flow. When everything is finished, placing the instruments in the room and the composition is done, in real life we have the task to do one thing, the actual recording. In the digital domain this is often neglected. All parameters are set and the section is printed or rendered. As a game composer who is working with big templates, I have multiple pieces of music in my session. As you can imagine, every piece requires different miking, even different seatings of the musicians. For example, would you seat the musicians in a different way for, let's assume, a small percussive group or a solo instrument with soft string layers or a big symphonic orchestra? You see? So, when composing for film, and games. Different types of orchestrations are a daily task. When staging the instrument there is no one-fits-all. Every piece requires its own solution. Especially with the amazing microphone positions delivered these days, such as gallery and other far-off mix. We can design interesting spaces. But what works great for one piece can be a complete downer for the other one. So what if we automate all these hundreds of parameters in every contact instance, we would go totally crazy. That in mind, I have designed a workflow that embraces the old concept of recording. Everything is set up and then the piece is recorded. Changing a couple of parameters lets me then record the next one and so on. I do the recordings in real time for some other reasons I want to explain here. The first reason is the loop concept we apply in game music, but I cover this in a different tutorial. The recording happens in real time to a punch of stems. The virtual instruments are routed inside the door to armed audio channels and recorded there. The advantages are great. We can design stem groups. For example, we do not need all different violins, virtual instruments, on one single stereo track and not every percussive instrument on its own. But when recording a piece with, say, six heavy drums only, then we reroute and place each drum on its own stem so we, we can mix later and have full control. Basically, we try to collect similar instruments on stems, whilst being certain they work as a stem for the mixing engineer. This means that also in the routing domain we would adjust the setup for every piece and change it between separate recordings. Now it becomes even clearer why a well-designed template is of invaluable use. For my music, I even take it one step further and collect my roughly 400 instrument channels to some 60 stem channels. When all virtual instruments are routed to their default stem group, the whole thing is playing nicely for recording a track. But I reroute if required for cases like Ah, here I guess I want to split the dum dum from the Chinese gongs. But they end up in the same stem because they reside maybe in the same contact sampler instance. Then I decide to send the gongs to a different contact output and route this to a different stem group. Now, of course, the room simulation is in between the virtual instrument return and the stem. And I guess for such a use case, everybody would love to appear the gongs in a different room position than the tam-tam anyway. 
You get the point, every piece is different. So typically I end up with some 5 to 15 stem channels recorded, as said before, recorded simultaneously in real time, as every piece then would have material on different stems, those are again routed to mixing groups. I have 16 such mixing groups and they reflect the channels I would love to have on my mixing console. Strings high, strings low, woodwinds, brass high, brass low, spherical synths, chords, mallets, big percussion, small percussion, overheads, a solo instrument maybe. Once this is set up, when doing the template, there's not much routing needed here. All stems are collected again and routed to convenient mixing buses. They are not printed again. The mixing engineer can then still edit a single stem or reroute it to a free channel. For example, separating the violas from the violins, originally both routed to the high strings, because he wants to additionally reverb them. As there are no pads in this track, for example, he routed them there and so fills up his mixing desk with another channel. I guess that most people do the mixing by themselves. Still, if you want to create a great track, use mixing buses. This is a wee old fashioned, but it pays off so much. In my Cubase session, all mixing buses are routed to one output of my audio interface. But when I give the material to the mixing artist, he routes them all to different outputs to use his analog desk. Then they are summed in the analog domain and at the very time recorded in the same Cubase session. For home recording, the session could be then rendered. There is one more issue I want to tackle when it comes to printing stems inside your DAW and why this is of most importance. You can bet finishing your session today in half a year or a year it will not play back properly when sending MIDI information to your virtual instruments. Trust me on that. Samples change, they get lost, you migrate to another system, samples are not found anymore, you lose a license, 32-bit stuff is not supported anymore. There are dozens of reasons why you should never rely upon that your session will perform the day after you work at it. Printing all music is at least one method to save your work as audio and make it available for remixing, stem rustering, changing stuff, adding stuff and rearranging to some extent. Reassigning a couple of hundred contact instances takes me 20 minutes for my old projects. Of course, I go crazy when I just want to render out a stinger or short version or bounce a fresh mix with the solo trumpet a bit softer. Please people, do not rely on live playback. What you can trust is simple and factual 48 kilohertz WAF. This and this only. The cool thing about it, think of it as a recording session. You meet the orchestra, define the seating, set up the mix and after recording people go home. You have spent a couple of thousand euros and have your hard disk with stems. Working alone in the studio with sample libraries is actually the same. Prepare, compose, record, have cool stems. Then mixing and mastering. Old school, reliable, proper. I do not want to dive into how to mix a virtual orchestra, but when you did your homework, it should sound awesome already with little mixing required. Know your sounds, choose the best samples, use them in a cool way and bring them to life. Place them in space, have a thoughtful setup, print your stuff and leave possibilities for mixing open. Having said all this, please be aware that this is not achieved in a day or two. Setting this up is a hobby on its own. It requires weeks and months of working on it and composing a lot. By the time your setup will refine and your workflow will become fast and slick and maybe we will enjoy your orchestral music in a game or a TV show or even a great movie. 
So that's it. I hope you can use some of my insights. Let us know in the comments how you work and what your problems with system setups are. Drop a like and a comment. Subscribe to this channel. Happy producing. Bye bye.